Hello and welcome to my Yu-Gi-Oh channel. Make sure to subscribe for more daily Yu-Gi-Oh content. So today we're looking at the last lot of cards that are in Antinomic Theory. It's the main box within Duel Links and we're covering the normal cards. You should... Musician King is a light attribute spellcaster type fusion monster. It's a level 5 with 1750 attack and 1500 defense. It requires Witch of the Black Forest and Lady of Faith as its fusion materials. This card is a very generic, very basic form of fusion monster. It's one of those monsters at the start of Yu-Gi-Oh that came out around the Battle City time. Uh, that really doesn't have any place. It doesn't have any type of effect or use, other than it is a good instant fusion target. Obviously that pay a thousand life points to special summon this from the extra deck, and it can be used to exceed summon for a rank 5 monster. That's the only way I see this card being us usable. Sandwich is a dark attribute spell cost type monster. It's a level 6, it doesn't attack. It requires Sangan and Witch of the Black Forest as fusion material. Again, like the other card, fusion monster, although unlike the other card, this is a level 6, so that means it can be very useful for going into rank 6 Xyz monsters. The interesting thing about the two cards used for its material, they're actually better than this card it is, because both of those can search for additional cards, uh, monsters that meet the certain conditions, but the problem with them is fusing them to summon this card is against the rulings. You cannot use their trigger effects because they've not been sent there by other means outside of a fusion summon. Primula the Rika Fairy is a water attribute plant type level 4 with 800 attack and 1800 defense. Its effect is if a monster you control is triggered except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position. You can target up to two plant type monsters you control, increase their levels by two until the end of this turn. You can only use each effect of Primula the Rika Fairy once per turn. So the great thing about this card is, is that it can instantly special summon itself very quickly just by tributing another monster. The other thing is it's able to just increase two monsters levels by two. So that means you can either get a rank six or a rank eight Xyz monster out much quicker rather than having to run very generic support which might not effectively work with this card or deck. Cyclamen, the Rika Fairy, is a water attribute plant type level 4 with 1800 attack and 800 defense. You can tribute this card from your hand or face up on the field, then target up to two plant type monsters you control, reduce their levels by two until the end of this turn. During the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was tributed and sent there this turn, you can special summon this card but banish it when it leaves the field. Only use each effect of Cyclamen, the Rika Fairy, once per turn. This is the reverse of the previous card, whereas that increased by two, this decreases by two. It's effective if you've got some of the stronger, higher level eights, for example, and you don't want to go into the level eight, you want to go into the rank six. It's a way of adjusting the... It's, it's a bit like level down. Cagna Malabranch of the Burning Abyss is a dark attribute fiend type level three with 1,500 attack and 300 defense. Its effect is if you control a monster that is not a Burning Abyss monster, destroy this card. You can only use one of these effects of Cagna Malabranch of the Burning Abyss per turn and only once that turn. Control no spell or trap card. Special summon this card. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can send one Burning Abyss spell or trap card from your deck to the graveyard. Essentially what this card does is it helps you to foolish burial your spell and trap cards. They might have graveyard based effects or they might be easier to recover and search from the graveyard than to try and take them from the deck. It's decent enough card and actually the condition of special summon this card isn't difficult because it just means you don't have any spell or trap cards on the field. And that means if you've got this on your first turn, it's very easy to complete this type of effect. Raghig Malabranch of the Burning Abyss is a Dark Attribute Fiend type level 3 with 1100 attack and 900 defense. The effect, if you control a monster that is not a Burning Abyss monster, destroy this card. You can only use one of these effects of Drahig Malabranch of the Burning Abyss per turn, and only once that turn. If you control no spell or trap cards, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can choose one Burning Abyss card from your deck and place it on top of your deck. This had the same special summon effect of the previous monster that I mentioned, so it's a decent enough effect. 
it helps you to go into rank threes, providing you have other burning abyss monsters, otherwise it self-destructs. And the benefit of when this goes to the graveyard is you're able to top deck whatever specific card from the burning abyss you want. And having that knowledge and having that control means you're able to control the game state more efficiently than drawing into a random card. Arbor, Batman Branch of the Burning Abyss, is a dark attribute fiend type level 3 with 1,700 attack and 1,000 defense. Its effect is, if you control a monster that is not a Burning Abyss monster, destroy this card. You can only use one of these effects of Barber Mellow Branch of the Burning Abyss per turn and only once that turn. If you control no spell or trap cards, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target up to three Burning Abyss cards in your graveyard, except Barber Mellow Branch of the Burning Abyss, banish them, and if you do, inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each. Uh, keep in mind this is an okay card and the ability to summon itself is fine. The attack stat on it is really good for a level 3. The Banish effect isn't really that effective, unless you've got cards which can recover Banish monsters very easily, as you're actually only doing 150 life points of damage per the new rules to do with burning life point effects. Alien Psychic is a Dark Attribute Reptile type level 1, with 200 attack and 100 defense. Its effect is this card is changed to defense position when it is normal summoned or flip summoned. Monsters with A counters cannot declare an attack. It's a decent a card from the point of view you can stop your opponents that have a counters from doing anything. My concern is you have to generate those counters to begin with. The thing is, I know you can do that. I think there's one or two quick play spell or trap cards that can distribute a counters, but they do have to meet certain conditions. And the other thing I've got to think is if someone's able just to, if your opponent's able to summon anything that does not get an a counter, can that shut down this type of effect? This card is a very easy target to run over, especially made so because of its weak stat lineup. Balloon Lizard is an Earth attribute reptile type level 4 with 500 attack and 1900 defense. Its effect is to put one counter on this card during each of your standby phases. When this card is destroyed, inflict damage to the controller of the card that destroyed it equal to the number of counters times 400 points. It's a very decent effect, but there's a couple of problems with it. Firstly, it only builds counters during each of your standby phases, so before you can get massive amounts of damage, it is going to have to be on that field for ages. The other thing is it has to be face up, so unless your opponent has attacked into this and not managed to get over it, or you summon this in attack mode and then change it to defense during your next turn, you're putting yourself in a very risky position. It's also the fact that it doesn't do 400 points of damage, it does 200 due to the new rulings on burn effects, as I've mentioned countless times now. And that means to do 40, well, well to do the 4,000 points of damage, you're gonna need 20 turns. And generally speaking, it might be just that much easier to run your opponent's um, deck to nothing before you actually get this effect off. Turbo Rocket is a wind attribute machine type tuna monster. It's a level two with zero attack and zero defense. The effect is while attacking this card cannot be destroyed by battle. If this card attacks after damage calculation, inflict damage equal to half the attack of the attack target to your opponent. This is an okay effect for what it does. It's good because it's consistent burn damage and it's every time it, but the problem is it's every time it's attacking. That means if it's attacked, you take your level of damage but your opponent doesn't take theirs. It makes it a very uneven playing field because your opponent can just keep going into this. And even if you've got cards that protect this from destruction, such as, I don't know, Power of the Guardian, you keep having to use that effect. You keep this card around, but the amount of damage your opponent is taking in, in, in effect damage is going to be much less than what you're going to take in battle damage, which is the main concern of this card as you're not going to take half, they're not going to take half the damage, they take a quarter of the damage because of the burn effect rulings. Um, it would have been nicer to introduce this a few you know, months ago before that effect came about, and then maybe this card would have seen play. Outside of that, it's fine because it's a necessary target for that rocket booster, um, that turbo booster, who is the synchro monster, that's level three. Um, it specifically requires this card, so in that respect, it might be usable. Secret Sect Druid Wid is a Dark Attribute Spellcaster type level 4 with 0 attack and 1800 defense. The effect is if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one continuous spell card in your graveyard, set that target, that set 
card can't be activated this turn, you can only use the effect of Secret Sect Druid Wilt once per turn. Whilst I think this is a decent effect and, you know, you're going to be sending this to the graveyard to maybe use it as cost for an Xyz effect, um, it is a little bit slow. It does prevent your continuous spell card from being activated immediately. You use something like Burn of the Mighty or another continuous spell card that actually has some power to it. Instantly, that would be fine, but waiting until your opponent's turn, that might be too late to rely on it to kind of save you. Megaris Light is a Dark Attribute Fiend type level 3 with 900 attack and attack defense. It's a normal monster, so its flavor text is the fatal beams from the eyes of this monster result in grim destruction. It's just a pack filler, it's a normal monster, and it's very forgettable. Water Magician is a water attribute archetype level 4 with 1400 attack and 1000 defense. The flavor text is this monster swamps an opponent with an almost endless supply of water. Again, it being a normal monster, it's just a pack filler. I think there's only one or two normal monsters that actually see any real play. You've got those within the Gen Knight archetype that are useful. And then you've also got, I think it's called Angel Trumpeteer, which is one of the newer tuna monsters, which happens to be a normal monster. It being a level four makes it very easy to go into level eight synchro monsters. Mechaleon is a water attribute reptile type level two with 800 attack and 600 defense. Its flavor text is, it's a large chameleon with the ability to alter its body coloring. Using this ability, it can conceal itself in any location. Normal monster, and it's just another pack filler. Good and Evil in the Burning Abyss is a ritual spell card with the effect. This card is used to ritual summon Malakoda, Netherlord of the Burning Abyss. You must also tribute monsters from your hand or field, whose total levels equal six or more. During your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard and send one Burning Abyss monster from your hand to the graveyard. Add one Burning Abyss card from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Good and Evil in the Burning Abyss once per turn. I think this is a decent enough effect because it just lets you summon your monster anyway. But it, it allows you to kind of set up your plays as well because you're able to banish certain cards and also have the ability to then add a Burning Abyss card from your deck to your hand. So this hopefully balances out and actually makes the deck a little bit more consistent. Feng Sheng Mirror is a normal spell card with the effect look at your opponent's hand, select and discard one spirit monster to the graveyard if spirit monsters exist in his or her hand. It's a very useless card. Most players aren't using spirit monsters at the moment. There aren't any particularly strong ones out there. And even if there were, it's not something that's typically seen. I mean, you look at the meta, you look at any game state within all of Duel Links, you look at anything within most of Duel Monsters as a series, and you will not see this card being played. Nitro Unit is an equipped spell card with the effect Equip only to a monster on your opponent's side of the field. When the equipped monster is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of the equipped monster. It's useful depending on what you equip this card to. If the monster that your opponent has equipped with this card has more attack than your opponent's life points, simply by getting rid of that card in battle, that's it you've instantly gamed your opponent. The downside is it does have to be removed as a result of battle and not just destruction, so it's not as effective as it could be. Whilst I think it could be run as a one or two of, I think this is more effective within a Leo-type Leo deck because he has the power tool dragon, so he has the options of running various equipped spells without it potentially harming the style of his deck. Synchronized Realm is a continuous spell card with the effect each time you synchro summon a synchro monster, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. As always, it does half because of the new rulings, so that's 250 damage to your opponent every time you synchro summon. You're not going to be doing that multiple times within a turn, even if you are, it's maximum probably about two. Uh, if you're assuming for a, you say, Fudo style tuner deck, then that's okay, that's probably 500 points of damage. It's not a bad effect, but it's one that can be missed out on if you need to. Space Cyclone is a quick play spell card with the effect detach one Xyz material from a monster. It's okay, we're in the Xyz era at the moment, so a lot of players will be Xyz summoning using this card. Um, so this is actually a good way of punishing your opponent 
My only concern is you can run into this whilst your opponent doesn't have any Seize Monsters on the field, and therefore it's a wasted draw. TGSX1 is a normal trap card with the effect when a TC monster you control destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, target one TG Synchro monster in your graveyard and special summon that target. This card helps you to just advance your plays. If you already are able to just win over your opponent's monster, you're then able to accrue further advantage, especially if it's been a longer duel and you've lost a certain number of synchro monsters to your graveyard, you'll have an access to a variety of these synchro monsters. The Traveller and the Burning Abyss is a normal trap card with the effect target any number of Burning Abyss monsters in your graveyard that was sent there this turn. Special send them in defense position. You can only activate one the Traveller and the Burning Abyss per turn. It's fine as an effect, it's similar in some ways to something like, I don't know, uh, the Shallow Grave. But being able to bring out multiple cards, it's a combination of this and Soul Charge. Being able to do this, you can go into rank 3 monsters very easily. Detonator Circle A is a normal trap card with the effect of destroy one face-up monster with an A counter and then inflict 1000 damage to each player. So the burn damage will actually be 500 because of the new ruling. Um, it's okay as an effect, and actually it's fine depending on what your opponent has on the field. If it's something they've used lots of resources in order to bring out, and it has no protection from destruction, then great. If this is just being used on a standardized card, then it's not really that valuable and worth using its effect. Magical Thorn is a continuous trap card with the effect when your opponent's card in their hand are discarded to the graveyard, inflict 500 points of back damage to their life points for each card that was discarded. Um, again, this is 250 because of the new ruling, but that's per card that's discarded. So if you can put your opponent in on a clock where they're losing their resources and you're ripping out their hand, they can't do much about it. And whilst they're losing life points, they're putting themselves in a place where they may no longer be able to recover. Respect Play is a continuous trap card with the effect during their respective turns, each player must show their opponent their hand. I don't like this trap card. It's one of those filler traps that actually it doesn't serve a purpose. What it does is because you have to show during your turn what you, you're, uh, you're essentially doing, that means what cards you're setting face down. Your opponent has knowledge of that. They have knowledge of everything you're doing. Of course, you have the same of them, but depending on how you play and what a knowledge base is like, it might not make that big of a difference. It might be the case that your opponent's knowledge of your deck can work against you. I would prefer the continuous trap, the Eye of Truth. Whilst that does have the opportunity to give your opponent life points a thousand if they have a spell card in their hand um, every turn, you see your opponent's hand, they never see yours. Dora of Fate is a normal trap card with the effect you can only activate this card during your opponent's turn. Select one face-up monster on your opponent's side of the field. When you normal summon a monster that is one level lower than the selected monster, during your next turn inflict damage to your opponent's life points equal to the level of the selected monster times 500 points. Okay, again this is fine but it's very situational. Could be in a position where you, this is actually going to work, but realistically you're going to be doing maybe your opponent is summoning a monster that's a level 4, and you've summoned a level 3, okay, you do a thousand points of damage. It's decent enough, but just too specific to be that useful. There are so many other burn cards with more consistent effects. Cemetery Bomb is a normal trap card with the effect inflict 100 damage to your opponent for each card in their graveyard. Considering the maximum number of monsters and cards they can have in their graveyard, you're not doing more than like 1,500 points of damage. That's assuming they have their in full, their entire deck and their hand in that graveyard because it halves the amount of damage that you take due to the, you know, dual links ruling. It can do minimal amounts, but it's just not consistent and there are so many better cards than this. Kazaki's self-destruct button is a normal trap card with the effect inflict 1,000 damage to the player who destroyed the set card. This is 500 points of damage. And again, depending on what you or your opponent does, will affect whichever player. The good thing about this effect is if your opponent just accidentally chooses this card and they've wasted their own destruction effect, that's fine. 
the disadvantages having to run this card and be in a position where you draw into it and you actually never use it within the duel and get to a point where you actually lose because you've drawn this rather than something that could have been a lot more useful. Chain Detonation is a normal trap card with the effect inflict 500 damage to your opponent. If this card was activated as Chain Link 2 or 3, add this card to the deck and shuffle it. If this card was activated as Chain Link 4 or higher, return this card to the hand. This was one of the signature cards within one of the burn strategies that could constantly do things. Problem is, you're not likely to get a Chain Link 4 um, unless you and your opponent are using things against this card or trying to protect it. I really don't see that considering that you know, you, between you and your opponent outside of this card, they will have room for another five activations, which is unlikely at best. The damage is okay, but it's 250 points of damage. And the thing is, you're most likely going to just have this card sent to the graveyard. If you're lucky enough to get a chain link two or three, that's good. But it goes back to the deck, not back to your hand, where it's in its prime position to use its effect. Gem Flash Energy is a continuous trap card with the effect during each of your standby phases, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the number of face-up continuous spell cards on the field times 300. This deck synergizes if you're going to use something like Hamon, Lord of Striking Thunder, or if you're going to use this in combination with the Crystal Beasts, because they put themselves as continuous spell cards when they're destroyed rather than going to the graveyard. And again, this will do a maximum of, if it's just you, 300 points of damage because it's half. If your opponent has continuous spell cards, not saying that they probably will do, um, you could be looking at 750 points of damage consistently each turn. But that in itself forces your opponent just to be running very, very specific decks. And it's highly unlikely you can rely on that. Blossom Bombardment is a normal trap card with the effect when a plant type monster you control destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's attack in the graveyard. That again is fine, it'll do half the amount of damage because of the new rulings, um, and it's just a way of doing further damage. If your opponent is on low enough life that can be enough to game them then and there. If not, at least it might put them in a position where they cannot use certain effects because they might be cost-based effects and your opponent would have to pay life points to use them, or put them in a position where they might be on the defensive and might not be able to counter what you do next. Alien Skull is a wind attribute reptile type level 4 with 1600 attack and 1800 defense. You contribute one face-up level 3 or lower monster on your opponent's side of the field to special summon this card to your opponent's side of the field. If you special summon the monster this way, place one A, a counter on this card and you cannot no more summon or set the same turn. If a monster with an A counter battles an alien monster, it loses 300 attack and defense for each A counter during damage calculation only. So this again is something that's really pointless. Yes, I can understand you can get rid of one of your opponents, maybe troublesome, annoying monsters that happens to be a weak level, but most of the time, even if you're going to replace those monsters, this card will have a higher attack stat line up on it. Had it been able to work on any monster, I would say absolutely go for it. But as it is, barely any use at all, even when it's on your opponent's field and it generates the token on itself, it becomes 1,300 attack and 1,400 defense. The 300 point difference is really not going to make much when considering what you're going to be playing within the deck. Alien Kid is a light attribute reptile type level 4 with 1600 attack and 700 defense. The effect, place one A counter on all monsters special summoned to your opponent's side of the field. If a monster with an A counter battles an alien monster, it loses 300 at attack and defense for each A counter during damage calculation only. So this is a more consistent way of adding A counters onto your opponent's monsters, but it does kind of it's still weak, and it's not enough to justify running this card. Inmato is a dark attribute plant type level 3 with 1400 attack and 800 defense. The effect, when one other face-up plant type monster is targeted by the effect of a spell or trap your opponent controls, you contribute this card to draw two cards. Right, so it's not likely to be able to use its effect. I don't think anyone's going to be stupid enough to let this card use and resolve this effect. They would rather just destroy this or your or the other plant-type monster on the field. 
uh, by battle, and that way they don't have you just get a random pot of greed effect. Raging Araya is a water attribute spellcaster type level 4 with 800 attack and 1500 defense. The effect, once per turn, you contribute one water attribute monster you control, except this card, to special summon one water attribute monster from your hand. The monster special summoned by this effect is destroyed if Raging Araya is removed from your side of the field. It's a decent enough effect and it's fine, but you know, your opponent is going to go against your strongest monster. They'll target to get rid of this first. And then pop goes your, you know, stronger monster. The other thing is you do have to tribute another monster. So it does require you to have a little bit of field set up already, meaning it's not going to be as consistent as you want it to be. Don Turtle is a water attribute reptile type level 3 with 1100 attack and 1200 defense. The effect, when this card is normal summoned or flip summoned, you can special summon any number of Don Turtles from your hand. If you can set this up correctly, you can have three level three monsters on the field. So you can go for one of those rank three monsters such as Shark Caesar more easily. But it does require that level of setup. And I don't know, I don't think it's worth running when there are other monsters that could probably do this more simply. Even if you were to, you know, pair these with spell or trap cards, I just don't see it as being workable. Golden Flying Fish is a light attribute fish type level four with 1,700 attack and 1,000 defense. The effect, you contribute one other fish type monster, then target one card on the field and destroy that target. This is a decent enough effect if you're able to special summon multiple fish type monsters onto your field in the turn. And it's not just that it targets monsters, it can be spells or traps as well. So you have that flexibility depending on the current game state. A Cell Incubator is a continuous spell card with the effect each time an A counter is removed from play by a card effect, place one A counter on this card. When this card is destroyed, distribute the A counters on this card among face-up monsters. I think there's a similar enough card used by the Claudians, but actually it works in reverse. Whereas this kind of focuses on all the A cells, on all the A counters going to it, the other card, which is the Cloudian support, actually distributes counters onto all face-up monsters that are currently on the field. Aquamira Cycle is a normal trap card with the effect target one water monster you control and two water monsters in your graveyard. Shuffle the first target into the deck, and if you do, add the second target to your hand. So it's a neutral, you're not plussing off of it, you're not minusing off of it, but depending on what you need. Maybe the monster that you have on the field isn't good enough. And actually the two monsters in the graveyard are necessary either for their effects or for the uh, strength they have. Soul Demolition is a continuous trap card with the effect. You can only activate this card's effect when you have a fiend type monster on your side of the field. Pay 500 life points to use this effect. Both players select one monster card from their opponent's graveyard. Remove the selected cards from play. So this has a twin, you know, problem to it, or as you can say, maybe a benefit. You can banish one of your opponent's monsters that perhaps has an effect, you know, which is devastating, and if they recover it, it's going to be a problem for you. But they can also do the same to your graveyard. It also has to be run within a very specific deck, as it lists here that you need to have a fiend-type monster on your side of the field in order to even play this card. Next to be lost is a normal trap card with the effect select one face up monster you control, send one card from your deck to the graveyard with the same name as the selected card. Um, I don't actually know how or why this card would actually be useful. Uh, there may be some very niche examples of how maybe having multiple of a certain card might make a difference. Um, who knows? I think Symbol of Heritage is an example where that might be of benefit. But it's a very obscure reference point, and if you know of any examples, you can always put those in the comments down below. Seeding Ceremony of Suton is a continuous trap card with the effect, once per turn, you can send one water attribute monster from your hand to the graveyard to target one card in your opponent's graveyard and banish that target. This again is a decent enough effect. I mean, if you don't necessarily have cards that you need in your hand, or cards that can actually activate their effects from the graveyard, then by at least doing this, you're punishing your opponent whilst not costing you the jewel. 
And the final card is Bamboo Scrap. This is a normal trap card with the effect Tribute 1 Plant Type Monster, Special Summon 2 Plant Tokens. They are Plant Type Earth Attribute Level 1 with 800 attack and 500 defense to your opponent's side of the field in defense position. I don't know why you'd really do this unless you can trigger an effect which allows your monster to attack all monsters your opponent controls and has some kind of piercing ability as well. Otherwise, yeah, generally, I think there's one very niche example I can think of. I think it's called Rows of Tentacles. If it attacks and successfully destroys one of your opponent's plant-type monsters, uh, you inflict 300 points of effect damage for each monster destroyed by this effect, and I think it can attack twice. Um, so that's a very niche example. This was used by Akiza. Uh, I think it was in the dual bus Yusei Fudo in 